For several years, civil rights advocates have been asking for more diversity on the city's payroll. Officials say they've been making some progress, but there's little to be seen so far with new recruits on the Boston Fire Department. Making a new effort to change that are firefighters in the Boston Society of Vulcans and the Lawyers Committee for Civil Rights and Economic Justice. Joining us are a Vulcans member, Sally Rowe, and the committee's staff attorney, Sophia Hall. Uh, thank you both for very much being with us. Well, thank you for, for having us, us Chris. I want to start with uh, Sally. Talk about... Um, well, how you got on the fire department? I got on the fire department 13 years ago um, through uh, urging of my brother, who was on uh, Engine 5 in East Boston, who um, we were just having a conversation. I was in school at the University of Massachusetts uh, pursuing a career in education, and he just asked me, uh, why don't you try taking the uh, fire exam? I took it, did very well, and about two years later, I was asked to, uh, to take a position. Uh, so if you hold, um, what about the uh, the need for diversity? I mean, yes, it's it's jobs for more people uh, from who maybe have been underrepresented. But aside from that, what's the benefit of having a more diverse fire department? Well, the community at whole, not just community of color and the immigration community or the immigrant community, they benefit from seeing their public safety agencies reflected back. Meaning. They benefit from living in a world where they see people that look like them, that speak like them, that recognize their culture, respect their culture, serving them in various parts of life. And that's why diversity is needed. Not only so that people can feel comfortable, so there's transparency, but also that people are well informed, so that they're efficient, so they can serve the community that exists. So Lee, what about you? Where do you see the benefits? As Sophia alluded to. The, the us responding to emergency situations is, is a very important, but still time-wise, uh, a minuscule part of, of, of what we do. Most of our impact happens outside of the fire department. Um, it's very important that when we're off the job, particularly uh, black and Latino firefighters, we work in our communities when we're not in uniform to kind of foster that, uh, that link and that understanding be be between the citizens and the firefighters. And, and, you know, and so one thing is that I, I learned growing up with this around my house is that you're not just fighting fires, you're dealing with people who are under a lot of stress. You know, emergency yeah. situations have many definitions and we avail ourselves to uh, the public in any way we can. Sophia, what, what about ways to, to overcome this? Because we keep hearing about the barrier of, well, maybe veterans' preference, uh, you know, uh, I mean, is, is there some way to, to, to change the numbers and, and, and still have a good qualified fire department? So in January, we put out a letter to the fire chief and the mayor suggesting a package of solutions that would improve diversity. We asked for five things. One, that we shorten the residency preference requirement, which is currently at one year, and or excuse me, not shorten, but elongate, to make it three years so that locals would have an opportunity to actually apply and have that preference. We asked for there to be more involvement in the recruitment and the hiring process from the Vulcans to be able to use their expertise in recruiting new firefighters. We asked for them to take into consideration special talents and techniques such as language preference and things like that that would help them work within the community that they're serving. We always ask for implicit bias training because it's important for all bodies, all agencies to understand what bias they have to be able to overcome that and work through that as they serve the community. And we also talked a little bit, um, excuse me, about a cadet program. We've seen hopefully some success in the Boston Police Department. There's really no reason why we can't mirror some of that model for the Boston Fire Department. This is BNN News. We're talking with Sophia Hall from the Lawyers Committee for Civil Rights and Economic Justice and Sully Rowe from the Boston Society of Vulcans. Sully, what about some ideas the Vulcans have? About what would they suggest about ways to, to at least get more people into the recruiting pool? Well, I think the cadet program is probably, uh, in our estimation, one of the flagship uh, initiatives that we can propose I, as, a, as a Vulcan member and just as a concern member of my community. I'm in schools a lot, Chris, and talking to a lot of uh, students who are weighing their options after high school. They're not all ready for college. College isn't for everyone. But we, we are certainly encouraging them to uh, consider the Boston Fire Department as an option. But um, we want to be able to um, attach a semblance of realism to that 
uh, offering. We don't want them to just say it's, it's a pie in the sky type of, uh, type of situations. We want to be able to offer them some salient inroads to actually uh, realize in that, that, that dream. Uh, Sophia, talk about the other reason for, for getting uh, maybe a closer look at these recommendations, because I guess the idea is that if the city does nothing, that might uh, change their uh, legal uh, position in the sense that they could be maybe more vulnerable to some uh, other kinds of pressure. Certainly. What we've seen in our recent case with Jones v. City of Boston is that the court has identified when opportunities, when avenues exist, it's necessary for the city to take those, um, and failure to do so could open them up to liability. Mm -hmm. And at this point, realistically, what we've seen time and time again is the city tell us that diversity is a priority for them. So what we are asking for them to do is to show us real action to support that claim. And to be honest, we really want to come to the table with the city. This is a letter offering solutions and a request to meet with them so that we can collaborate together so that we can work as a team to improve this problem. It's not going to go away on its own. There needs to be real proactive steps taken. So I want to go back to, to uh, when you're talking to students in, in the schools. Um, what are you hearing from them about this? About this particular issue. The fire department. and they, I'm sure they've heard the stories about, you know, the, the, the sort of racial problems that have sure. gone back in history. Yeah. Sure. And we, that's something we don't shy away from. We, again, are very pragmatic. We're very, uh, we, we understand that youth um, can pretty much smell disingenuousness. So we, we don't fluff it. We don't play around with it. We tell them our actual experience. We tell them the good, the bad, the ugly. Um, there, and these are different students than probably uh, when we were in high school. Um, they're much more intuitive. They're much more informed with the advent of social media and other, and other uh, informational uh, streams. They know. So we don't play around with them. We tell them exactly what the deal is. No, if I, if I were one of those students, my, my question I would ask you, who you are, you went to UMass, you're studying education. Uh, why did you want to do a dangerous job like this? The city of Boston and its citizens deserve somebody like me to be protecting them. Um, uh, and I'm, I don't mean that in any uh, elitist sort of way. I mean that in I, I genuinely care about people. And um, I want the, um, the Boston Fire Department to reflect uh, the citizens that regard them in so much, uh, with so much high regard. Because like you said, when I was talking to these students, they have nothing but the highest um, um, regard for the Boston Fire Department. And Sophia, one, one other thing I want to ask you about the cadet program, because this involves some uh, people, I guess the students or recent graduates. What, what goes on in the program like that you, that you think actually helps with diversity in the longer run? Well, so nationally there are cadet programs in various cities throughout the U.S. And what we see is that they increase diversity because they get at a pool of people who may not necessarily have the information. They not only are informed in the sense of receiving those materials, but they get to meet people like Sully. So it's mentoring, really. In a way, in yes. A way, and yeah. it's, it's a level of outreach that we don't have right now in Boston. Okay. Thank you both very much for being with us. We're Thank talking you, to Sophia Hall from the Warriors Committee for Civil Rights and Economic Justice and Sully Rowe from the Boston Society of Vulcans.